I'm in the Trenta Additive Manufacturing Facility in British Columbia, Canada, and there's a live print going on right now. I'm Ian Commission, President of Canada Additive Manufacturing. This is Jim Zemlansky. <laughs> you can see their printer hangs from this overhead system, and right here is one of the support beams. Then the other one is on the other side over there. This gives them a massive print range of the entire length of the facility. I'm here with Jim. He's been pretty busy setting it up, but now that it's going, he kind of has a has a minute to to watch, right? Yeah, I do. Sure. Make sure everything's uh, going all right. Make sure things don't get too wet or too dry, and no problems with the hose management and our material doesn't run out. So. So take me through kind of the process. Standard MTech Duo Mix pump. Uh, we've made a few modifications to it uh, for speed control and such, but the dry mix goes in here. There's water added in the mixing tube here, and it's mixed, and it dumps into the wet hopper. And down here you can see this is the compressive cavity pump that provides the uh, material flow and pressure to the nozzle. And so down along, the no along our concrete hose. To a creative suspension system, they change with every print, so we're often setting up different hose uh, configurations. And down to the nozzle where it's laid down. We've got three prints, three pieces going in one uh, tool pass, so we don't have start and stop. And everything looks to be going great right now. Look how confident Jim is with the printer. It's incredible how confident you are with the printer to be able to walk that far away from it. Oh yeah, once it's going, you can walk away from it. It's uh, designed using Rhino and Grasshopper. So we've got our files prepared and uh, everything's ready to go, but I've got my software, my Rhino Grasshopper, all my settings and stuff like that available if I need to make adjustments on the fly if things are working out. So uh, just make sure it's prepared. So what we're doing now is I'm just doing a dry run. I'm just uh, reconfirming that the motion that the robot's doing is correct, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and prime the lines, get the mixer going and prime our lines. Can you explain the difference between the 1K material we printed the salmon in and this material? Uh, the 1K material has everything in it. So there's uh, rheology and uh, additives for setting in the mix, in the dry mix. Uh, this stuff is 2K with um, an accelerant that's added at the very end. That's what gives us our uh, buildability. So if we were to just use the uh, material as is, it comes out plasticized, really runny, and it doesn't set, uh, it doesn't build well. I'm taking a sample for the moisture content measurement. So we'll take a 50 gram sample, measure it, uh, measure a 50 gram sample, and then uh, microwave it to remove the moisture, and measure what's left.
So, Jim, now that we're working on the fourth or fifth layer, yeah. what are you focused on? Watching for problems. Everything's kind of on autopilot right now. Uh, we're worried about moisture content because it'll change the buildability, the printability, the pumpability of the material. And we're also watching for um, like collisions or hoses getting hung up. And uh, you know, every print is typically unique of some sort. So we're uh, you know, chasing the cable management. And what's the tablet you're holding in your hands? This is the uh, pendant for the robot controller, and I've got it open to the jog or to the, the speed override. So, depending on what's happening with the thickness of our bead, we'll modulate the um, the speed of the robot rather than the uh, uh, output of the pump. Uh, it's a lot easier to uh, change the robot speed. Than the Typically in regular 3D printing, the first layer is the most challenging and then sometimes people are able to step away from the machine. Yeah. Is this similar to that? It's similar to that, but um, we're usually watching for the first three or four layers. Until, uh, at this stage, what kind of problems generally might arise? Uh, at this stage right now, we're set up pretty good, so I don't expect any, but things that can happen uh, are like a clog, so if there's any debris in the material, or if the machine wasn't, the, the pump uh, and mixer isn't cleaned properly, you can get little pieces that'll flow through and maybe catch and uh, cause blockages. You'll start getting changes in your material flow. We're definitely watching for uh, water content. Um, so we're measuring the content constantly as we go. We've had problems with the water on-off valve on the mixing pump stick open, for example. Can't figure out why things are getting really saucy. How long will it be until you're able to lift this print from the floor? It's, we can do it in a day, but the strength will double on day two from day one, so we typically leave it for three days. Also, we want to keep it uh, moist, so we'll cover it and make sure it doesn't dry out, because that'll also uh, cause a lot of ex excess shrinking to occur. One of our other problems, our challenges, is air entrapment. Uh, sometimes, if we're running the pump too slow, we'll see air get into the mix, and that'll cause uh, like pressure accumulations, and we'll see bubbles in the, in the uh, material as well. So you'll be able to resume from your last spot. That's great. Yeah, because this middle part doesn't actually matter, right? This is just the connector pieces. You anticipated the issue and paused it specifically in the middle? Yeah. So if you mess it up, you mess up the okay, you can let that go. Okay, uh, pump speed, back up. And just like that, they're back in business. Yeah. It's crazy how we have an identical fling off on this corner. So, since we know the kids are going to be climbing on this thing, we put like a little bit of reinforcement in to prevent it from breaking, uh, from tipping from one way to the other. Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> it's upside down. That's okay. <laughs> okay, so we can uh, do the two. With any concrete pump, it's important after you use it to make sure it's clean, otherwise concrete ends up building up. And it's good to get it when the concrete is fresh and wet. And we just use some stuff to, we always want to keep the dry material dry and everything that's wet and concrete all cleaned up. Otherwise you get layers of concrete uh, cake. It'll break the pump later. <laughs> yeah, you get pretty wet, and and this winter, this will be fun. You want to get a shot outside. <laughs> it's only gonna get colder. We were talking about just having a roof, so then you can use a pressure washer. Oh, nice. Yeah.